In this video, I'm going to be addressing common concerns when it comes to planning for your financial future when you're not entirely sure your future will actually reside here in the UK. Perhaps you have plans to retire in another country or even at any point in your adulthood life, you may want to move to another country as well. This video will be applicable for those that are British citizens moving to another country or if you are a non-British citizen who currently live and work in the UK but may plan to move to another country, whether it's back home or another one, uh, at some point in the future. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. So before I get into the video, I hope everyone had a lovely Happy New Year. Um, I just realised that was my first chair swoosh here in the new year and hopefully there'll be another 52 to come in this year as well. So back to the video, I'll be looking at five key aspects when it comes to planning for your financial future. I'll be looking at the impact on any cash that you have sitting in a regular savings account or current account, uh, any investments that you have in a general account, so this is anything outside of your ISA, three impacts on any ISA accounts that you hold, four the impact on your private pension whether this would be through your workplace and or any other private pension that you may have and obviously number five looking at the impact on the UK state pension. So the first one up is what happens to the cash that you have saved in your current account or savings account when you move abroad. So when you do move abroad, you can actually keep these accounts open and it could possibly be better for you to do so if you do still have to pay for stuff here in the UK. For example, any council tax bills that you have to pay for if you decide to keep a property in the UK. It might actually be easier for you and the company um, if you pay them through a UK bank account rather than paying them overseas. Otherwise, you could purely just keep the account open just for the sake of having one. Maybe you do need to transfer some UK cash um, over to the overseas once in a while. Or equally, you can just close the account down and transfer all your cash to your overseas account when you do so. It is worth noting that if you are expecting some income to come through from the UK when you are abroad, uh, to check with that provider if there's any restrictions with depositing that cash into an overseas account. Sometimes they may only be restricted to depositing that money into a UK account instead, so it might actually be worth you keeping that account open um, for those reasons. Otherwise, if the income doesn't actually have any requirements um, and you do have that flexibility with depositing into an overseas account or a UK account, then it might actually be worth you tossing up which is actually cheaper and or easier for you to manage. So decide whether it's cheaper or easier to have the money go into a UK account and then you transfer it manually uh, to an overseas account or if you just get them to transfer it over to an overseas account as well. Because remember, when you are moving your money overseas, you will be subject to additional transaction fees um, and exchange rates and different providers may have different charges and different rates um, at any given time. So it might be worth doing some research and finding out which is the best option for you. It is definitely worth contacting your provider to understand all of the options that are available to you because again, everyone's circumstances is different. So you may have a unique arrangement with your provider that may give you unique opportunities um, or no options whatsoever. So do speak with them. So what happens to any investments that you hold in general accounts? So this is any assets that you have invested in that are outside of your ISA account. I'll be touching that in point three, um, but these are investments that are in a general account instead. Now, in most cases, you will be allowed to keep the account open once you have moved abroad, but you may find yourself restricted on the amount of trading that you can do or any further capital that you can add to that investment pot as well. And from what I read, this is all down to tax and compliance implications. Again, it is definitely worth speaking with your provider because depending on your situation, you may have unique agreements with your provider or no options or whatsoever. Um, so do speak to them to understand all the options you have available to you, uh, much like what I mentioned in the cash scenario. Remember that there are likely to be transaction and tax implications at the point of withdrawal and transfer to your overseas account. So the third one is the impact on ISA accounts when you move abroad. Now, generally speaking for all ISA accounts, so that's cash, lifetime ISAs, stocks and shares ISAs and innovative finance ISAs, you will not be able to add more to your account once you have moved abroad. Now, there are some further nuances that are specific to the lifetime ISA part, um, which I will mention at the end of this section. So you're not allowed to add any more money to your ISA account once you have moved abroad, but you can keep it open. Now, the government do offer some flexibility about when this restriction 
uh, does come into place. So according to the government website, the restriction comes into place once it has been one tax year later from your move. So breaking it down, remember that here in the UK, the tax year starts from the 6th of April and ends on the 5th of April in the following year. So if I move abroad from the 1st of Jan, I have until the 5th of April to contribute any further capital to these accounts whilst I am living abroad. After the 5th, it will be the new tax year and the restriction will come into place. So this can potentially offer you some flexibility if you are flexible with moving dates to move on a date that will help you maximize your contributions to your ISA account. Because remember, any returns that you get from your ISA account will not be subject to any taxes whatsoever. And this will still be honored even if you are moving abroad. So this can prove useful to you if you do decide to ever come back to the UK and claim on these accounts. So any returns that you get will be tax free. But obviously if you do decide to stay abroad and withdraw from these ISA accounts, Although these accounts won't be subject to any UK taxes, you most likely will be subject to overseas tax laws um, and be taxed accordingly as it will be seen as a type of income when you do transfer from your UK account into an overseas account. So do be wary of that. Um, also note that if you do decide to move back to the UK, um, you can then add more to these ISA accounts uh, and that restriction will be lifted. Now talking on lifetime ISAs specifically now, because there are a few nuances um, that are subject to this account. So for some context, for those that are unfamiliar with lifetime ISA accounts, these are accounts where you can save money and earn bonuses from the government, and these can be used towards your first property here in the UK, or can be used to fund your retirement once you reach the age of 60. If you do want to learn more about these accounts, I have done videos on this in the past. I'll put a link in the description box and in the cards right now if you do want to check that out. So just like with the other options, you will be restricted to contributing to your lifetime ISA account once it has been one tax year later after the date of your move. But if you are permanently moving away, you do have further restrictions on how you can actually use this money. And this can be subject to either of the three following options. So the first one being is that you can use this money to buy a UK residential property. Now, remember, this will only be applicable to you if you are a first time buyer and you buy the property here in the UK. Now, I just want to put a quick note on the first time buyer thing. Um, because it doesn't mean a first time buyer here in the UK. If you own a property anywhere in the world, you will no longer be classed as a first time buyer and therefore this option won't be available to you. The second option that you have available to you is that you'll have to wait till you're 60 and you can then claim on your ISA account then. Assuming that you will need access to this account um, whilst living abroad, you will of course be subject to transaction fees and exchange rate fees um, at the point of withdrawal and there might be further tax implications as I mentioned in the earlier segment for ISA accounts as well. And the third and final option that you have available is to actually close the lifetime ISA account uh, before you move and cash out immediately. But because you're doing this outside of buying your first property or waiting till you're 60, you will be subject to a 25% penalty fee for doing so. So this will wipe out any government bonuses that you've accrued so far, plus you'll also lose some of your own capital as well. By the way, if you are enjoying this video so far, this is going to be your reminder to subscribe. Now the fourth aspect is the impact on your private pension when you move abroad. So this can be your personal private pension that you've set up, um, or more likely you'll have a workplace pension with your employer. Now this is quite a big one and I believe it is a common concern for those that do believe that they will be moving away from the UK at some point in their future. And because of this, it is usually used as a reason not to contribute to their workplace pension or any other private pension that they may want to set up because they believe that if they move away you won't be able to access these private pensions from abroad. Now this is completely wrong so I want to clear the air here. So to be clear if you do move abroad before your pension age and you do have a private pension here in the UK so again this is either a workplace pension or a personal private pension that you've set up you can either stop paying in to these pension accounts once you've moved abroad and take the money out at a later date. The earliest you can actually withdraw from your private pension accounts is currently the age of 55, but this will be increasing to 57 from 2028. Another option is that you can continue to pay into these accounts even if you are abroad, um, but please do be wary that the tax relief that you do get from paying into pension accounts uh, may be limited or not offered at all. Because one of the great things about saving in to your pension is that it does offer you some great tax relief, uh, and I keep banging on about this in all my pension videos, um, but this is specifically usually reserved for UK residents, um, but there is a limited um, aspect uh, available to those that have moved abroad, but do check with your provider 
before you decide to make any decision. And finally, you have the option to close your UK pension account and have the pension be transferred to your overseas pension account. But this can only be done if your new pension plan is what is called a qualifying recognized overseas pension scheme or CROPS, I believe that's how it's pronounced. So this ensures that your new pension scheme meets certain criteria that are fit for UK regulation. There is a chance that your UK pension provider may still make the transfer even if your new pension plan isn't under crops, um, but you may be subject to additional charges um, when doing so. Some other things to note which might help you actually decide which of these three options would be most beneficial to you is to understand your overseas tax laws because taxes can get very complicated in this situation. Uh, because as I already mentioned, you do get great tax benefits when you do contribute to your pension uh, here in the UK. And even when you claim on it, you can claim up to 25% of your pension as a tax-free lump sum. Now this may actually be restricted if you do move abroad. For example, sticking to that same example, I may be able to claim 25% um, of my pension as a tax-free lump sum, but when I transfer it to my uh, overseas account, this may be actually subject to overseas tax laws. Uh, and I will be taxed accordingly. Also, please note that if you do keep your UK pension account, do check with them to see if they can actually pay directly into your overseas account. Um, some will only restrict it to only paying to UK bank accounts specifically. So do double check with them. And usually if they do offer the service of paying to an overseas account, this usually comes with extra charges as well. So you might want to toss up, which is actually more uh, cheaper for you or easier. So I hope that actually clears the air because I understand that is a common concern and rightly so because I don't think the information is clear out there about what happens to your pension specifically I've mentioned other stuff but pension specifically um, because your money is locked away for such a long time and how that will impact your financial future uh, even if it's not here in the UK now the last one on this list is the impact of the UK state pension when you move abroad so provided that you have paid enough to qualify for state pension you can actually still claim on the state pension here in the UK even if you are residing in another country. You can set it up so that the pension is paid into your overseas account directly, or if you do have a UK account, you can get that pension paid into that account instead, and then you can transfer that money to your overseas account in a separate transaction. It is worth noting though that if you are someone that is eligible for pension credit here in the UK, so this gives extra money to retirees um, to help them with the cost of living for those that are on low incomes, this will actually be stopped if you do move abroad. When you move abroad, you will need to contact the International Pension Centre. And if you are in Northern Ireland, you'll need to contact the Northern Ireland Pension Centre and tell them about the move in advance. Another thing to note is that the UK state pension typically increases year on year to account for inflation. But this won't happen if you move to certain countries. But it will happen if you are moving to any country that is within the European Economic Area or the EEA, Gibraltar, Switzerland, and countries that have a social security agreement with the UK. I'll put a link in the description box down below to the full list of countries where if you move to any of them, you can expect an increase in your state pension payout. Please note that the state pension is paid out in pounds sterling. So the amount that you do receive in your foreign account may change and this will be down to the exchange rate. Cool, so those are the five key aspects covered and hopefully I've answered a lot of questions that you may have had before the beginning of this video. Uh, there are two more things that I do want to mention that I believe may be a cause for concern for many individuals. So the first one is Brexit and if they've had any impact on any of these aspects that I've already mentioned in this video. You'll be pleased to hear that aside from making it more difficult for British citizens to live in an EU country on a permanent basis, um, it has pretty much had zero impact on any of the five aspects that I've mentioned in this video. So what I've said in this video still counts in a post-Brexit world, and, and I just wanted to make that super clear because I know this is a concern for many. And lastly, I just want to put a final comment on taxation. Uh, if you are someone that is looking to move abroad, you may be concerned about being taxed twice when you do so, one from the UK side and one from your overseas country. You'll be pleased to know that there are countries out there that do have a double taxation agreement with the UK, and this usually outlines which country has the right to claim on the taxation over the other. So if you are concerned, for example, about being charged income tax from the UK and overseas country on your state pension, for example, if the country you've moved to does have a double taxation agreement with the UK, it will usually state one country can only tax you and the other one cannot. Unfortunately, if you do move to a country that doesn't have such an agreement, um, it is very likely that you will be expected to pay double tax. Cool, so that is it for this week's episode. Hopefully I have now addressed 
uh, the majority of concerns for those that are trying to plan for their financial future, but you're not necessarily sure it's here in the UK. Um, if you, of course, you do have any further questions, do let me know in the comment section down below. I'll be sure to answer them. And as always, if you did find this video really useful, I would appreciate if you smash that like button. That is wonders for the growth of this YouTube channel. And remember, I release a video every single week. So if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button too. See you later. Bye.